Welcome everybody, this is my top 10 Atari 8-bit computer games. Description of the video, I'll have links if you want to jump around or if you want to skip this little intro, it's up to you. Now, I was an Atari fan from the beginning. I had an Atari Pong, 2600, Atari 800, etc. I've been an Atari guy all my childhood life. I never had a Commodore 64, but recently Lizzie and I did go uh, bargain hunting and we did pick up a com couple Commodore 64s and disk drives. We're going to start exploring the Commodore 64 and what it has to offer, doing some videos on it. Uh, and if you're a Commodore 64 fan, let us know what we should be checking out uh, down in the description or in the comments and any advice you might have for us. Now, as for the channel, we're going to be doing a lot of retro video game stuff, 3D printing projects, software, hardware projects, indie game reviews, and of course, the occasional AAA title. Uh, Lizzie wants to be very involved because she's getting into the retro gaming scene and doing hardware projects. Now, as for the elephant in the room, Atari versus the Commodore 64. The Commodore 64, as much as it pains me saying, is a better system hardware-wise than the Atari 800. Not a huge amount, but it is better. But one thing that I think a lot of people don't factor in is when these systems were released. The Atari 800 was released in November of 1979. Commodore 64 was released in August of 1982. So about two and a half years separate them. So Commodore did have the advantage of designing something newer and seeing what the current op competition offered and then trying to beat that. Now, you might say that Atari could have surpassed it with the XL or the XE line, and while those did offer some marginal improvements, the game developers would still develop for the 800s because they didn't want to exclude them. They wanted to be able to sell their products to the most Atari users as possible. Now, this is similar to what most game developers would do for Commodores as they came out with new systems. When the 128 came out, they didn't just start making games for the 128. They made sure the games worked on the 64, and you could play them on your 128. So I think if you look at how well the Atari holds up against the Commodore and the fact that it was two and a half years older, I think it says a lot about how good the original design was. All right, so let's get started here. My Atari 8-bit computer top 10 games coming in at number 10. Valley Cat by Bill Williams and John Harris. Now, this is copyright 1983 Synapse Software. Now this is a kind of a dark horse game for me. This game is just so weird. Um... And so unique. But you play this cat, and you're outside this house with all these different houses and windows. People throwing things, trying to knock you out. There's a dog that'll come out down below. You catch the mice for points, but you want to go inside these windows. And when you go inside a window, then you have to, uh, in this case, you're going inside a fishbowl, and you want to get all the fish. But you want to avoid those, like, pulsing, glowing worms, because they'll kill you. Now you do have oxygen, so you gotta watch it. You'll see the cat here start to turn a little red. I go up, diving back in. Most cats don't like water. This alley cat does. I gotta be careful here, I don't die, get some more air, and then I'm gonna grab these last fish. But basically all the different rooms had different like themes to them. Uh, so, you know, trying to get mice. Now here you can see uh, the, uh, the little love interest of the cat. So you wanna grab that present for him, and then you want to try to get to the top. The other cats are fighting you off and want to knock you down. But we've made it. Kissy smoochy smoochy. I see little kittens in the future. That gets you extra points. Um, there's a lot of different types of rooms that you can go into. And like I said, if you stay on the ground too long, you'll see a dog come after you. And it'll kill you. And here I'll let you see that. We just kind of hang out down here. Here comes the dog. He can't get you on the cans, but if you fall off, uh, when the dog's there, he will kill you. Now, this one, you're supposed to knock these, I think, these plants off. You can see as you walk around, you make the floor dirty. That keeps the broom busy, but I ended up hitting the spiders. So, uh, let's go ahead here, and and um, I'm having a heck of a time controlling this. But let's try to get in another room here, see if we can get something different. Got to wait for an opening. All right, so this one, you want to knock the canary thing off. And you want to get dirt on the ground to keep the broom busy. Uh, and you got to be careful. The broom will try to push you out. Here comes the dog here. I'm dead. So this is a very unique game. And I think people will uh, kind of get a kick out of it and play it. And here comes the dog trying to jump. Not doing too good a job. And I'm dead. Now in this one, there's cheese. You want to catch all the mice. You get all the cheese. And then you, you finish the uh, wave. So this one's not too bad. The mice kind of move around a bit. Uh, but this, like I said, this is a really unique game. Uh, really, I, it was just so weird. I don't think there's anything like it. 
All right, number nine, Montezuma's Revenge, copyright 1984 by Robert Yeager, and it's published by Parker Brothers. Now, this is kind of a platformer. Uh, you can you control kind of a guy who's uh, kind of an Indiana Jones type character, and you want to kind of avoid the different obstacles, jump around. You need to find keys to open doors. You know, you can jump the snakes. These are gems. You can't walk off those edges. That will kill him. He can't take any fall. Uh, you can see there's fire. Um, I got a key. I'm kind of jumping through it. You pick up this, you like kind of like Pac-Man, you can kind of pass through the enemies. Um, this is kind of a tricky wave, and I'm kind of cutting around because I, I want you to see all of it, not every mistake of mine, just to keep this video short. Uh, but this one, you just got to kind of jump the skull. But this was a real fun platformer with a lot of levels that got increasingly more difficult. Um, I needed to actually go up here. Um, even though these things glow, I don't believe they will kill you. So let's just see if we make it up here. We did. And then we just got to have some quick reflexes, which we, of course, have, have in spades. Uh, and then this here is a jump down. All right, number eight, Donkey Kong. Now, this is by Landon Dreyer, and it was published in 1983 by Atari. Now, this is one of the best, I think, um, Donkey Kong games out there for the 8-bit days. Um, just the controls are so tight and smooth. The levels look good. Um, it's got the, it's got the weird order that the U.S. had, uh, which I don't like. They, I wish they would have kind of gone the more traditional order. Uh, because what you'll see here is I completed the first level. But this second level should be different. But in America, we got this, which is kind of supposed to be the final level. Because when you complete it, he falls on his head. Donkey Kong does. And you kind of get the girl. And then it starts over again with harder levels. Uh, but the Atari did a really good job. The graphics are good for the time. The, the sounds are good. Um, the animations for Donkey Kong are good. Um, a lot of the games don't do a lot of animations and things that, you know, in the cutscenes, it's just like you beat the level, it's, it's over. But you're going to see here, when we beat this level, I mean, they kind of have the Donkey Kong hang in the air. And then he takes his fall. Not very happy. And then we're kind of jumping forward. You know, this conveyor levels in the game, one of the favorites of mine, can be very difficult when you have multiple springs. This is the first time through, so it's not as bad. Uh, but just just the really good conversion of the arcade game with basically all the levels, the weird American order that they did for whatever reason, and um, just a beautiful port. Now, there's a lot of other arcade games, and I'm going to do a top 10 Atari 8-bit arcade games, but this was one of my favorites. All right, coming in at number seven, Dandy. Now, this was written by John Palovich, and it was published by Atari slash APX. Now, the APX was Atari Program Exchange, and we'll get into that in a second. But this is kind of the predecessor to games like uh, Gauntlet. Now, this was a four-player game. If you had an Atari 400 or 800 with the four joysticks, you could all have your three other friends play with you. But the, you go around. I'm playing it single-player. You kill the mobs. You want to reach uh, the different levels. There was 26 levels, level A through Z, and it actually had a level editor. Uh, so you could actually, like, I have it on easy, but you could specify, like, for um, harder level, maybe put less health. Uh, but you can see right now it's just a sprinkling of mobs. There's money for bonuses. You play multiplayer, you fight over it. Those hearts let you revive a player who dies on your team. But if you shoot them and nobody's dead, or in my case, only one player, uh, and you can shoot the bombs here, which will actually let you kill all enemies on the screen, which I'll do right here. Uh, but it was really fun when you played this with your friends because if like, one of your friends died, you'd want to say, get a heart, shoot a heart, you know, and it would bring that player back. And here we've gone to the next level. I went ahead and skipped through to uh, levels C. I skipped level B. Uh, but you can see the mobs are, each one's kind of react differently. Some mobs, like the little guys are the base level one mobs, these guys. Some of the other mobs turn into uh, different ones. Now here you can see there are skull spawners. And those spawn different enemies. So here I am taking out as many of the enemies as I can to kind of work my way uh, to the, the mob spawner. And then here's a big mob spawner. And you're going to see I'm going to succumb here. But this game is a lot of fun. I recommend you check it out with your buddies. All right, coming in at number six, The Goonies. 1985 by Scott Spamberg, Rick Mursky, and Kelly Day. And this was published by Datasoft. 
Now this is based off the movie. You control two characters in the game. You can see I have the one character I'm moving around right now. I'm pushing a chair. You hit your button and it'll let you select the other character. So you toggle between them. So I'm starting a counterfeit money machine right now, taking control of the other character. The counterfeit money uh, keeps the bad lady, if you remember her from the movie, busy. I knock that water bottle over to get my one character out. Now this one I just have to kind of run and beat her. She's going to see me, but as long as I fall down this hole, she can't get me. Uh, now this game is kind of fun, uh, kind of tough, but it's very fun. The levels are kind of based off of the movie, obviously. So it's got that tie-in. It's got the music, uh, the Sandy Lopper song, The Goonies. Um, you can see here, you've got to get both characters through. Um, I got pulverized already by one of these big boulders. Um, you just got to kind of time it. Usually you just push yourself up against it. And as soon as it lifts, run. The bird will kill you. We have to get one of our characters down here to this uh, valve to basically open up one of those barrels so the other one can get to the key which you see flashing on the screen right below the second character and then that'll let you get through the bottom door um, so I've done that now I just need to get through I went too fast and have to start all over so this game is, is challenging um, I'm playing these games under emulation so I'm using an Xbox controller I'm doing emulation just so I get the best quality uh, for the for the video uh, but using an Xbox controller is not as nice there some of the diagonals uh, will trigger left or right when you don't want to. Uh, but this game is a lot of fun. I highly encourage people to check this one out. Again, based off the movie, really fun game. Lots of levels tied in with the movie. Uh, take a look at this one. This is my number six top ten game for the Atari 800. All right, coming in at number five, Archon. Copyright 1983 by Ann Westfall, John Freeman, and Paul Reich published by Electronic Arts. Now this is a really fun game. It's basically chess, but you battle to see who wins the pieces. There are dark squares and light squares on the board. If you play the dark side, you're more powerful on dark squares. If you play the light side, you're more or powerful on white. And then there's a bunch of other ones that rotate the colors so that they're not fixed. So over time, they might be good for light. Over time, they might be good for dark. Uh, you can see here the computer teleported one of his uh, characters to fight my uh, unicorn, the yellow unicorn, but we are on a dark square, so I am weak. That was a good reason to use the uh, teleport, which would immediately send it across the board. Uh, to win the game, you either need to kill all of the other players' parts or pieces, or capture the five points that you see in the center of the walls and the center middle. Capture all five of those points, and you win automatically. So the computer is trying to go for go for the kill here. Killed one of my unicorns, summons an elemental to attack my other one, but this is a light square, and I've already got one hit in, and I've taken out that elemental. The, the wizard and sorcerer on each side only have uh, one of each spell type, so you can resurrect, you can, you can teleport. Here you can see they're using the shapeshifter to attack on a dark square. The shapeshifter is the blue character. It becomes a duplicate of whatever it's fighting, so if you... You know, if the shapeshifter attacks my sorcerer, it becomes a sorcerer. Uh, so it's kind of fun. There's a lot of strategy involved. This is a great game. Um, now this shapeshifter is going to be in trouble because I'm a beast. And I take it out. Now the computer, I'm, I am cutting through this to make the game a little quicker. The computer does resurrect the shapeshifter here. Um, and then it uses it to attack my unicorn. This is a stupid move because it's a light square. Only one resurrection spell. And I'm a beast, as you know. But this is a great game to play with your friends. Uh, friends and I used to do a lot of smack talk while we played this. Uh, fun game. A must play on any 8-bit platform or PC platform that has it. Check out Archon. All right, coming in at number four, Ghostbusters. This is 1984 by Glenn Anderson and Hilary Mills, published by Activision. Now, as you can hear, this one did a really good job of taking the Ghostbusters theme song, the artwork, the movie in general, and really, this is one of the best games from a, based off a movie of its time. Uh, and that's one reason why it's high up on my list at number four. You can hear, see here it even does the theme song with a bouncing ball, so you could sing along at home if you wanted to. You don't have to. You can sing along now if you want. Uh, but in this game... You're going to basically get a Ghostbusters franchise. You take, you get like some seed money from the bank to start, and you're going to see here, we're going to start picking our car. I usually go with this car as my first one, 
It takes a decent amount of money, but it allows you to have pretty much all the things you need to start. The energy detector, image intensifier, marshmallow sensor. Um, the second page here has the ghost bait, traps, and vacuum. You want to have as many ghost traps or, as possible um, so that you can catch more ghosts before you have to go back to headquarters. And the vacuum is to catch the ghosts that are around as you drive. So we're going to cut past here. And you can see the red building is one of the buildings that has a ghost. It's a slimer, basically. So we're going to drive there. Basically, once you get there, you're going to have your two guys get out. You're going to want to put one guy over here to the left. You drop the trap. One guy over to the left, kind of aim to the right. One guy to the right, aim to the left. And you bring the basically your proton guns in. Don't cross the streams. Push the button. Catch the ghost. He's in the trap. Now you have one trap for the ghost. You fill up those traps. You have to go back to the Ghostbuster headquarters. Now, as you can see, as you drive around, you put down uh, seeds which kind of trap the ghosts from moving and you have to catch them with your vacuum. So you don't know where they're gonna come on the track. And you're gonna see one up here here in a second. I drive over to that lane real quick, push the button, suck it up in the vacuum. That's how you catch the ghosts that are roaming around the street. The goal is to get the ghosts, get the slimers, and then just basically build up your score and your until the city's PK energy gets to a certain point. And then basically you have to kind of eventually face Zool. Here you can see we caught this ghost. However, I will say that you can do perfect and still miss the ghost. So like, look here, I got the trap down, got my two guys, I'm bringing the things in, and I fire it, and he just slides away, and I get slimed. So here you can see I basically put bait down and got one ghost, and then I'm gonna come over here and put bait for another ghost. Then I'm just gonna go to the headquarters, which is gonna let me go ahead and clean out that trap. Here's the first ghost, swoop it up, and here comes the second one in a second. Again, you kind of want to stay in the middle because you never know where they're going to be. And it should be showing up right there. Got lucky, it was really close to center. We're back at the headquarters here in a second. Here we are, fresh characters, traps unloaded. And then here we go, another Slimer. And you basically just, you know, you just need to keep this up. You, you earn money and everything. Um, you can save your game and, and everything. It's a lot of fun. Check out this game. Coming in at number three, Bruce Lee. 1984 copyright by Ron J. Fortier and Kelly Day. Kelly Day also was involved in Goonies. And this is published by Datasoft. So this is a platformer. This is literally one of my favorite games to play. Uh, you control Bruce Lee. There's a ninja that tries to thwart you. And then there's a, like a big fat green sumo. Now a little fun thing, if you want to play two players... Uh, the second player can actually control the uh, sumo guy. And you can use that for good or evil. You could actually play it the way you're supposed to, which is to basically try to get Bruce Lee. Or you could actually just do nothing and help him. But you can see I'm trying to grab all these lamps, avoid the, the ninjas, and there's a lot of different levels and, and complexities. Those little uh, things there will fry like the ninja just got fried. That uh, You still want to pick up the lamps, dodge, the time, you know, the timing right so you don't fall and get hurt. Continue to get all the lamps. This guy's going to get fried. And you can see I missed that lamp. But you go through a ton of levels, very varying complexity. Just a lot of fun. Now, these things on the floor, when you walk over them, they kind of explode like electricity. Uh, it will kill the enemies if they get hit by it, or it could kill you. And you can see I kicked the ninja back into it. And I got to kind of wait here. And then I'm going to run across. I'm going to try to kick that guy into one. Kick that guy into one. Boom. Now I opened up another section. I'm cutting through a lot of this just so you can see it. Um, a lot of fun on these levels. This game is just beautifully done. Um, it, it plays well. The controls are nice and tight. You can see those little white things will kill you. So you got to kind of hop them. As soon as you get these two, it returns the direction flips. Uh... I mean, I just can't say enough about this game. You definitely need to check it out. There's so many levels, uh, so much variety. I'm kind of cutting it short here. Just, I don't want to spoil a lot for you. Uh, but you can see here, they get a little trickier and trickier as you go. But this is a great game. You owe it to yourself to try this on any 8-bit platform that it supports. But the Atari version is lovely. Uh, check it out, Bruce Lee. 
All right, coming in at number two, Minor 2049er, copyright 1982 by Bill Hogue for Big Five Software. Now, this was originally created by Bill on the Atari 8-bit, so I still think the Atari is the best platform to play this on. little uh, secret that no one knows, or a lot of people don't know, that phone number you see here, if you type that in and then you, then you on your keyboard, and then hit shift and then a number, from one to zero, it'll switch you to the levels. So it's basically a way to warp around. So in this game, think of it as like kind of like a reverse Pac-Man. Instead of eating dots, you walk on the floor, which fills them in. You want to fill in all of the floor. And if you see the enemy right now, they're glowing radioactive. But when you pick up the different like items, you get temporary, kind of like Pac-Man when you get a power up, you get a temporary ability to be able to kill the enemy. So you can see I kind of jump there to take out the enemy. You know, grab another one here so I can get as quickly to this guy and kill him. Uh, there's 10 levels to the game. Uh, this is really a ton of fun. Uh, also, if you would like to play this, I'll put a link in the description. The developer of this game, Mr. Bill Hogue, created it on his website. He put a version of this for Windows that he recreated from this Atari build. So you don't have to even have an Atari or an emulator or any other retro system. You can download a Windows version to play. So check that out. But you can see these this level, these angled things you see are slides. And basically you'll slide down them. So I'm jumping them because I don't want to slide down yet. I'm trying to, to take my final moment to do the uh, last slide. So I want to get that, get that guy while I can. I'm looking pretty good here. I just got to worry about the time. The quicker you finish the level, the more points you get. Uh, but you can see I'm trying to get the last little pieces here. Once I get these little here, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm being really careful there. Now I just walk across, slide down, boom, second level done. Um, I'm going to show you a few levels here, uh, but I'm not going to show you all of them. So here's level three now. What's funny about this, when you see these little transporters, if you stand inside it and then hit the number, so I hit the number four, you then teleport to that level. So you'll find that when you play this game, you usually build yourself a lot of patterns and you remember those patterns. And I remember these patterns from when I was a kid. Um, I just got a bonus man there at 10,000. I believe you only get one bonus man for the entire game. But I'm gonna go up to level three here. I'm gonna grab that power up there, that item, that anvil, and I'm just gonna walk down. Bounty Bob can fall about one and a half height of his, of his height, one and a half that. Anything more than that will kill him. But great game, check out Miner 2049er. All right, coming in at number one, my number one game, Mule. Now this was written by Daniel Button, Tim Rushing, Alan Watson, and Roy Glover published by Electronic Arts in 1983. Now this is a great game. This is really, you can play it single player, which is what I'm playing right now, but this is much more fun to play with three other friends. If you have an Atari 800, you could use all four joystick ports, which was the most comfortable way of playing it. I think you can play it without four uh, joystick ports. You can play four players still, but you choose your characters here. I'm gonna choose the, the beginner character here. Um, some characters have other benefits, like this guy's head sticks out, you know, so he gets to the bidding first. But I'm going to go with Flapper because I get a little extra money to start. Uh, but what you basically do is you're, you're, you and the other three players are colonizing a planet. Now, this is on beginner mode. I don't want to spoil a lot. If you look at the name of the planet you go to, you might see if you look at that a certain way, it might mean something more than just errata. Um, but you're going to go to the planet and you're going to colonize it. This is a six month um, colonizations which means six turns each turn lasts one month what you do on each turn at the beginning all four players are trying to grab different pieces of land you're allowed to have one land per turn and you basically push your button in order to choose your land and if you're doing it like say the two 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 or three people or all four want the same piece whoever the computer registers is picking it first so you can see the ship is bringing us here we're gonna land. Every every start of the round, it'll show you like kind of like the plays this little music and shows the characters walk up, and it shows you in the order. Since I start with extra money, I'm in first place, so that's why my character, the blue guy, is at the top. It shows you a summary of your money, lands, goods, and a total. Now the ship is leaving. It won't be back for six months. We're on our own. 
first round, we start, we pick our different land pieces. Now, I'm going to go for one of the water lines, which it runs vertically up the middle. So I'm going to push the button right here at this water. Boom, I got it. And the computer now has to pick theirs. One of the computers picked an area with mountains. That's good for mining ore. Another computer player wanted to go with food like me. And then we're waiting for the last computer player to make a pick. And it went with Smith ore potential. Now you can, you can mine, you could grow food there. You can do energy, but it makes the most sense to do one of the three based on what type. So I'm going to grab a mule and I'm going to outfit it for food. The top right one is few, uh, food. The middle one is energy. The left one is Smith ore. Once you outfit your mule, you take it to the location, stand your player on the house, hit it and boom, you've outfitted it. When you're done with your turn, you go into the pub to end your turn. You'll get a little bit of money. And now it's the computer's turn and I'm gonna kind of speed through it. That player, computer put Smith ore down. This next one did Smith ore, which makes sense because that's the mountainous ranges. And then the last one is gonna do food just like me. So we've ended the colonization phase of this first round and we start the production phase. So you can see I got four pieces of food that grew, uh, signified by those four dots, but I had the beauty of getting attacked by pests, which is now eating all of my food. So I basically gained nothing in this first round. So that really sucks. After the production phase, you go into the store phase. Now this is, first thing is Smith ore. Now you can see the two characters produced four Smith ore. The purple guy, pink guy, and me have nothing. So the computer, the two that made ore can sell it. The store will buy it for 50, as you can see there. So they can choose to sell or not sell, or we could choose to buy. They're gonna walk down if they wish to sell to meet the store price. You can see I can start to walk up if I wanted to try to buy that Smith ore from them. If they're the only ones that were selling and I needed it, they could either not sell to me or they could keep the price very high. So this was a great way when playing with your teammates. Now here's the food. You can see how much we used. You use more food depending on how much land you have and how much spoiled. And then production, only the one guy got food because my food was eaten by the pests. So I'm okay though, I don't have any surplus. The other guy has four. So you basically wanna sell your goods, um, buy, your, buy goods, sell goods. Uh, if you can monopolize something, like if you can get all the food like if a store is out of food and you have like all the food or you buy all the food from other players, you can starve the other players. And when they're starving, they don't get as long on their turn. So they may not have enough time to outfit a mule. And then of course you have the energy phase, which none of us produced energy. So we're gonna basically all still be at three here because none of us created a mule to, to build energy. So it's a real fun game. You want to play on the harder difficulties. I left it on the lowest one here just so we could jump into the game. There's more to the full difficulty versions of the game and you, you take longer than six months. So you basically, it's a great game. You basically are just trying to battle out with your friends and you know beat them, starve them, or buy them out, you know, do whatever you can. You want to be the guy at the end of the last month that has the most overall points and you're the basically the winner of the game. So this game is a lot of fun. I really recommend you check it out. Uh, all these games, games are good. I mean, if we go back and look here, we got Alley Cat, Montezuma's Revenge, Donkey Kong, Dandy, The Goonies, Archon, Ghostbusters, Bruce Lee, Minor 2049er, and Mule. Um, just some fun facts too. A lot of these games, like the newest game out of all of them, was uh, Goonies, which was 1985. Many, many of the games were 1983. And the oldest game was Minor 24, not, Minor 2049 or at 1982. Um, two of the games were published by Datasoft, two of them published by Activision, or I'm sorry, two of them published by uh, Electronic Arts, two by Atari, two by Datasoft, and um, Kelly Day was involved in both Goonies and Bruce Lee from an artwork standpoint. Now here you can see a storm occurred which gives you an increased food output, which is good for me. Uh, but again, this is my top 10. Your top 10 may vary. Let me know in the comments what you liked or didn't like about the, the choices I made. 
what you would have picked. If you're a Commodore person, let me know what I should be looking at for the Commodore. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. If you don't like it, you know, you know what to do too. And uh, hopefully I'll be doing more top 10s. I'm going to do a, definitely do a top 10 arcade conversions for the Atari 8-bit uh, and lots more hardware projects, software projects, uh, retros, gaming, indie gaming, uh, 3D printing, you name it. Lots of cool stuff coming. Hopefully you'll stay tuned. If you like the video, hit that subscribe button, those thumbs ups, comment in the video. If you don't like it, that's fine too. And if you want to support the uh, Patreon so that we can do more projects, there's a link in the description of the video.